And our next story, Patrick Murphy visits a local museum where it's not likely that anybody will ever accidentally hang one of the exhibits upside down. We go to Grand Center, where we find something of a traffic jam at the intersection of art and life. Grand Center is a place where high art, low art, and every art in between meet. At one end is the Pulitzer Foundation, exhibiting modern and contemporary art in an internationally acclaimed building designed by architect Tadao Ando. And just down the street, there's the Moto Museum, exhibiting some of the most unusual motorcycles in the world, housed in a former printing plant. Somewhere in between are some interesting questions about the nature of art and design. So I bought this um, Polish motorcycle off a woman in central Poland and Poland eBay. It cost me 900 zloty. Polish eBay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then... Um, Over the past 10 years, Moto Museum director Stephen Smith has collected more than 100 motorcycles from 21 countries, spanning almost 100 years. Driven by a love for transportation on two wheels, an interest in the history of technology, and a keen eye for design. This is a French motorcycle from 1917, and although it looks like it's seen better days by the time they finish restoring it here at the Moto Museum, it's going to look like brand new. Actually, this is practically a bicycle. Look, it's still got pedals. The interesting thing about this collection here at the Moto Museum is you can see there the evolution of the art, design, engineering, and history, but mostly they're just a lot of fun. The common thing in all these bikes is that they have two wheels, an engine to move forward, and in one, with one exception, brakes to stop them. Yet, I have a hundred different solutions to that design problem, and those solutions are based on the purpose of the bike, the technology available at the time, the socioeconomic background that was going on at the time, the history. So in the first 60 years of the last century, there were easily three to 4,000 motorcycle manufacturers. How do you differentiate yourself? Design. Pulitzer director Matthias Vasek's career in Europe and the United States is that of a respected art curator, historian, and critic. He's definitely one of St. Louis's leading go-to guys on questions about art. I've asked you this question before in other stories and it always drives you nuts, so I have to ask you now, is it art? <laughs> it doesn't drive me nuts. I think it's, it's um, um, well, first of all, art is in the beholder's eye. If somebody signs it and, and uh, puts it into an art gallery, it turns into art. The question, however, is interesting, what would happen to these motorcycles if you brought them into the Pulitzer? And uh, when you think about the discussion that took place uh, when the, I think, was it Boston, um, but also the Guggenheim showed uh, motorbikes, and they got... Uh, very mixed uh, uh, critiques. Uh, on the one hand, uh, certain people were incredibly enthusiastic and others said that they are betraying their mission. So maybe trying to bridge the gap between high art and industrial design is not as important as simply appreciating what we're looking at. Whether it's a piece of sculpture at the Pulitzer or the Fender ornament of a 1953 Indian at the Moto. And then in a league of their own, there are the Italian bikes. The Italians, as opposed to some of the others, there's a, there's a history and a culture of design that goes back 2,000 years. And you can see it in the motorcycles themselves. For instance, you know, this rear structural piece is, has a flair to it, and, and the design of the engine has elements to it that represent design that if, when we go over and look at a Russian motorcycle, none of those appear. The, the, the Italians typically use very bright colors, reds and yellows, whereas the Eastern Europeans are gray and drab colors. And then there's festive sort of logos with this big swirl on the S for certum as opposed to ish, which is a Russian motorcycle. So, you know, those traditions and those cultures are, are, are represented here and, and you really see the kind of design history and the culture of design represented in the different countries where these bikes came from. And so these bikes talk to us. Whether it's in the colorful quirkiness of a five-seater 1928 Czech bike built between the world wars, <laughs> the utilitarianism of a World War II German military cycle, or the classic lines of a post-war Italian Vespa. This 1959 Hungarian bike, with the distinctly non-communist aim of the deluxe, offers illusions of luxury and freedom in a country locked at the time behind the Iron Curtain. We might not see motorcycles anytime soon at the Pulitzer, or paintings and sculpture at the Moto Museum. 
but the worlds of high art and industrial design are closer than we might think, whether their creations hang on a wall, sit on a pedestal, or barrel down a highway.